Algebra 2, Concept 21, fu Function Operations and Composition. Let's start with some vocabulary definitions and formulas. Pause the video if you need to, to fully get down the definitions of these terms. So let's start with function notation. This is just a review, but remember function notation is a descriptive way to write an equation that shows a record of inputs and outputs. So an equation, an example, we could write as 3x plus 1. In function notation, we replace the output y with f of x. And then if we place a number in for x, we note that in the function notation. So if we place 2, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So this gives us a record that when we plug 2 <coughs> into the equation, we get out 7. Next definition, domain. Remember that domain is a rule for the inputs of a function that will give real number outputs. The two things we want to be on the lookout for is we don't want any x values that will give us 0 in a denominator, and we don't want any x values that will give us negatives under even roots, like the square root of negative 3, because that is a non-real number. We need real numbers. <laughs> Third definition, function operations. So we are going to take whole functions and add them, subtract them, multiply, and divide them. And then finally, we are going to compose functions in what we call function composition. And that's where we place the output of one function as the input of another function. All right, let's just start by evaluating functions. So if you look at the function notation, and I'm just waiting for my, there we go. Let's try it one more time. <laughs> okay. So we have this function, f of x equals 3x minus 5, and then some directions to find f of 8. So that tells us we're going to place 8 for our input. This reads f of 8, or the function value when x is, when x is 8 is, so we take 3 and then we replace x with 8. 3 times 8 is 24 minus 5. 24 minus 5 is 19. So now we have a record, when we write that in function notation, that f of 8 equals 19. When we've got an input of 8, our output is 19. B, we need to find f of negative 2. So we're going to place that into our function for x. So we'll take negative 2 squared, which is positive 4, times negative 3, which is negative 12. Negative 12 minus 2 is negative 10. So f of negative 2, or the function when we plug in negative 2, equals negative 10. So that's how we evaluate functions using function notation. Now we're going to talk about operations. Let's go back to that. So we're going to be adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing functions. So jump over and look at the example column. On the left, it tells you what you're doing. So you're taking f of x, and you're just going to take what that function equals, and it says add g of x. So you're just going to take what g of x equals. So over on the right of the equal sign, that's what's been done. f of x plus g of x. And then you just combine like terms. So the 5x and the 1x is 6x plus 2. Now the next one says to subtract. So we take the f of x function, f of x, and we subtract what g of x is. Now we need to subtract all of g of x, so we have to subtract the 1x to give us 4, and the 2 to give us a negative 2. Now look at the multiplying. So now you can see f of x has been multiplied by g of x, distribute, and it's 5x squared plus x. And then finally, the last one, we have f of x, divided by x plus 2. And there's no simplifying to do there. Now we will be finding domain rules 
for any functions that don't have specific numbers that we're plugging in for x. So the domain of a sum, a difference, a product, and a quotient functions when we add, subtract, multiply, or divide consist of the x values that are in the domains of both of the original functions. Additionally, when we divide, we have to be on the lookout if there's any other x values that would give us a non-real number or something that, was un that would be undefined, where we might end up with a zero in the denominator. Now let's do some function operations and then find the domain, if we need to. So we've got f of x equals 3x minus 2, g of x equals negative 4x squared, and number 1 says to add f of x and g of x. So since I'm adding them, and I don't have a specific value that I'm plugging in for x, I want to first think about what the domain rule is for the original functions. So I'm going to write it just a little bitty, if I can, up here. So I have the domain. Now I know this is a linear function, so I think, do I have any limits on what I can place for x? Well, I don't, because I can take 3 times a negative number, 0, positive, and I still get real numbers. So all real numbers, that's a symbol for all real numbers, will be my domain of f of x. Now g of x, I look at what is happening with the equation and I'm squaring my uh, input, squaring x. I can square negative numbers or zero or positive and I will always get a real number answer. So my domain for that function is all real numbers as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and add f of x plus g of x. So I take what, I'm going to switch colors so we're not seeing the red f of x is 3x minus 2. g of x is negative 4x squared. Now I'm going to add those. What I do, I'm just going to move them around so they're in standard form. Biggest exponent term goes first, 3x minus 2. That's all I can do to clean that up. I don't have any specific value to plug in for x. The last thing I want to do is give a domain rule. So remember in the information box that we just looked at on the last slide that the domain of the resulting function once we add needs to include the domains of the original two and then we look and see if there's any other restriction that we need to add so there's not this is a quadratic I can plug in negative zero or positives for my x squared or my x's and get real number answers so there are my two functions added and a domain rule. Alright, now we're going to multiply. So let's take f of x, which is 3x minus 2, and let's multiply that by negative 4x squared. Now after we do that, notice that we do have a specific value that we're going to plug in the for the domain. So we're not going to end up setting a domain rule because we have a specific number we want to put in there. I'm going to distribute my negative 4x squared so I get negative 12x cubed plus 8x squared. Now this is the part where I go ahead and take my new function there and I plug in 3. So I'm going to have negative 12 and then 3 cubed plus 8 times 3 squared. Let's see, so negative 12 times 3 cubed plus 8 times 3 squared. So that will give me negative 252. So that is our final answer, that is f times g of 3. Now let's perform the function operation and then we're going to find um, the a domain rule. So we have f of x equals 6 minus x and then g of x equals 1 over x. So first thing I want to write a rule for my domain this is a linear function. 
I can plug in any values for x and get a real number answer. Now with g of x, I see that I have x in the denominator. We can't have 0 in the denominator. That's undefined. Can't divide by 0. So I need to exclude 0. So that rule means that x can be anything except it can't be 0. So now we'll go ahead and divide these functions. So I'll take f of x, which is 6 minus x, and divide it by g of x, which is 1 minus x. Now remember when we divide by a fraction, we just keep what is on top, change to multiplication, and then flip. <clears throat> now we can think of both of these over 1. So this is essentially just 6 minus x times x. So I can distribute my x and get 6x minus x squared. The last thing I'm going to do is write a rule for this. So I need to include the domains from the original. So I've got all real numbers, but then I also need to exclude 0. So I go ahead and say that with this new function, f of x divided by g of x, which equals 6x minus x squared, my domain cannot include 0. All right, now let's take the g of x function and subtract f of x. So g of x is 1 over x minus f of x is 6 minus x. So 1 over x minus 6 plus x. Now if we simplify, we can think of these all over 1 and then get a common denominator of x. So I have to multiply my 6 by x and my last term by x. Then I can just combine everything over my one denominator of x. So I'm going to put my x squared term first, then my negative 6x plus 1. Last thing I'm going to do is write a domain rule. So I need, I have all real numbers for f of x, but then I need to exclude 0 for g of x. So this is our final function, g of x minus f of x, with our domain rule. Now we're going to compose functions, or problems that are composition of functions. That's when we have one function within another one. You can write it two different ways. You'll see notation. So you read them the same way. You read them as f of g of x and f of g of x. This way is a little more descriptive than the first way. You can see that the g of x function is in the f of x function. And that's exactly what happens when you compose two functions. So this says we could write this I'm changed to blue, as f of g of negative 2. So I'm just going to leave that space blank for when we're completely done and we'll write the value. Since we have a number in for our first input, we're going to get a number answer. We're going to start on the inside and work out. So we're going to start by finding g of negative 2. So we just take our g function, which is to square x. So I'm going to take negative 2 and square it and add 3. 4 plus 3 is 7. Now I know what g of negative 2 is, so I can plug it in. And I'm going to find f of 7. So now I'm working outward here. So my f function says to take negative 3 times whatever x is, and that's 7 minus 1. I'm going to drop down negative 21 minus 1 is negative 22. So now I can put negative 22 because f of g of negative 2 equals negative 20, or sorry, negative 2 equals negative 22. We don't give a domain rule because we had a specific value in for x. So now let's do this. We can rewrite this as f of f of 0. 
And that's just a little more descriptive with what's going on. We'll leave a blank for when we find that answer. So let's start with f of 0. So we take our f function, which is to take negative 3 times whatever 0 is and subtract 1. So 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Then we plug that back into the f function, because I'm just first here, then I'm working outward. So negative 3 times negative 1 minus 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2. So f of f of 0 equals 2. In the next problem, we are going to find f of g of x again. So let's rewrite this as f of g of x. Okay, notice we don't have a specific. So we are going to end up with the function in a domain rule. So let's start by writing domain rules for the first two functions. The first one's linear, so our domain rule is all real numbers. The second one is 1 over x, so x cannot equal 0. Okay, so this tells me that I'm going to take my g of x function and I'm going to place it in here for my input for my f of x. So now my f of x function is 2 times whatever x is, and in this case it's my g of x function. So I can just simplify that a little bit. And then my domain rule needs to include both, so I need to say x cannot equal 0. Now pause the video and do the independent practice problems and then come back and check your work. Alright, check your problems. Now on the first problem we are finding um, g of x divided by f of x and then finding g divided by f of 3. So first you're going to divide those functions and then plug in 3 and you should get 11 halves. On the next problem, we're finding g times h of negative 4. So first of all, you multiply the two functions together here, and then plug in negative 4. And you should get negative 105. On the third problem, we're finding, we're composing functions. We're finding g of f of 2, so you start inside and find f of 2 which equals 13 and then find g of 13 which equals 41. And then in the last problem we are composing again and finding g of h of n. Since we're not finding a specific value or putting in a specific value for x we need to find a domain rules. So the first two functions are linear so our domain will be all real numbers. When we compose those functions, we end up with a linear function of simply 2n, and the domain is also all real numbers. So this is the answer. Here's my work. So I start by taking my h function, which is n minus 1, and plugging it in to my g function. I simplify and get 2n plus 1, and then I take that and plug it in And actually, I don't plug it in again. That is my final answer here, 2n plus 1. Because when I take h of n, which is n minus 1, plug it into my g function, and simplify.